Hey and welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're actually going to look at how we can use Swift UI Redacted to improve our overall UX and show placeholders in our app. So just to show you this, so if you haven't watched it before, um, there actually is a video series that I have, which I'll link, where we actually build a news app. So if we just open up the original app, you can see we have this loading spinner and it loads up all these articles. Well, what we actually want to do is we actually want to improve the UX and not be limited to a loading screen. And instead we want to use the redacted API. So if I open up what we're going to be working on, you'll see that when the view loads, but to show you again, you get this placeholder. So the placeholder, um, similar to what you see on Facebook, is there until the content is replaced. So it just basically makes the app look nicer and gives it a better overall UX. So let's look into how we can do this in Swift UI now. So if we just open up our news app project from the previous videos, um, like I mentioned in the intro, um, so essentially if you just scroll down to the, in the article view all the way down to the V stack, um, so if you've not done this yet, it's fine. And um, with the date, you might be coming here just from as a brand new um, viewer. So, hey, <laughs> so if you've not saw this, you, I have a playlist which you can always can go back to refer to and just basically get up to speed with where we are now, which so it's all good. It's all cool. You're not missing out. So essentially, if you want to use Redacted in Swift UI, um, it's really, really simple to add a placeholder onto a view. So all we need to do is literally just add one line and um, that is it. So I'm going to show you now. So on our article source here, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say dot redacted and then the reason is going to be placeholder and as you can see in the swift ui preview if i just basically just zoom in a bit for you so you can see here that it's actually now turned it into a bar um, to show that this is a placeholder now this redacted uses something called option um, sets so it's very similar to an enum um, but it's kind of not um, I don't, i'm not gonna go too much into detail but essentially um if you just basically use the case dot placeholder, you can specify that you want this view to be a placeholder. Now, what about if I wanted the whole view to be a placeholder? Now, I don't need to apply this onto every single view. All I would need to do is apply this onto the overall container. So let's do that now. So if I just delete this, what we essentially want to do is we can see that it's all nested inside of a H stack. So on our H stack, so if you just scroll down, so our stack is here, we want to apply the redacted um, modifier onto it. So let's do that now. And as you can see, just by applying it onto our stack, the entire view is now a placeholder, which is pretty cool. So you can see just one line, you can do some really powerful stuff with Swift UI. But what about if I actually just want, I want all of them to be um, a placeholder except from the title well again it's very very simple so all we need to do is essentially just go on to our title and then we just need to use another modifier called unredacted so as you can see unredacted has now basically said that we want everything else in our so we want everything in, in our container to be redacted except from our title so pretty it's pretty nice and simple to use so what we're going to do is we're going to basically just remove all of this and then we're going to move this as well and now what we're going to do is we're, we're going to look at how we can actually replace our loading screen um, with the progress view that we had in our first videos and now replace it with this redacted so we can offer a better ux within our app experience so let's look at how we can do this in it all right, cool. So essentially what we're going to do now is we're going to refactor what we currently have and we're going to replace our progress view with, um, you know, this redacted. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to basically give our article view a state. So when it receives a value, it basically changes the way the UI looks. So it reacts. And what we're going to use is a property wrapper um, that comes with Swift UI called state. So let's use this now. So this that we've done here is actually something that's very, very common in Swift UI. And basically, essentially, we're following a pattern where we have a single source of truth. So what do I mean by that? So then essentially what a single source of truth means that the responsibility of this article view is only to update 
and um, reflect the changes to our data. So essentially what we're doing is we're injecting data into this view and this view will reflect that state. That's the only responsibility of this view. So it, ha it hasn't got any other responsibilities. So when you're working with like, you know, changing the way a view looks based on something outside of the view, you want to inject it into the view to reflect that state. So none of the logic in terms of changing whether something is loading or not should happen in the view. So if we actually scroll down, We've got an error, so we need to actually update our preview to now um, take into account this new uh, property that we've added. So let's do that now. So I'm just going to set that to false for now and we're going to come back to this later. All right, cool. So that's all good. So now what we need to do is we actually need to go into our view model and basically tweak some things so we can basically pass in the state of whether it is loading or not. So let's do that now. So what we want to do is we basically want to check um, our state and essentially what we want to say in our code is if it's loading, then show the redacted placeholder. And if it isn't loading, then we want to just basically show the content that we got back from the service. Now, in order to do that, we have to actually compare um, our enum cases. So with this, by default, because our enum is not um, it has associated values here and here. SwiftUI isn't smart enough to figure this out. So we have to use the equatable protocol to do this um, for us. So let's do that now. So you can see here, um, Swift, Swift um, or the, not Swift. As you can see here, Xcode is basically complaining that, you know, it doesn't conform to the protocol because, you know, it's got associated values. It can't figure it out. So we're going to add the protocol stub now. And um, essentially what this protocol stub is doing is it essentially allows us to um, tell um, our compiler that if a condition is met, then these two conditions meet, then this is true or this is false. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a switch statement now um, that essentially compares each of these cases as to whether um, they're true um, or false. So I'm going to write this out now and then we'll go through it. Okay, cool. So let's just break this down. So for now, it's fine to um, leave this error the way it is. We'll come back and resolve this error in a second. Let's just break this down. So essentially what we're saying here in this function and um, this equatable function is we're going to basically go through um, the left hand side and the right hand side. So the left hand side is what we compare when we say is a equal equal to, you know, B the right hand side. And if it matches these cases. So if the left hand side is loading and loading, then we can assume that it's the same and it's true. If the error left hand side localized description is same to the is same as the right hand side localized description for the error, then we can again assume that it's true. And for the success, if we can assume that the left hand side um array of articles and the right hand side array of articles are the same, then it's true. Now if none of these matches then we're going to return false. Now we've got one error here and it basically is saying to us that our article needs to conform to equatable. So in order to resolve this, all we need to do is go into our article and then after identifiable, just literally just put a comma and then say equatable. So now if we go back into our file, you can see here that the error has actually um, gone away. So now uh, we've made our article equatable so it can compare itself to make sure that it can check to see if it's the same or not. So now we've got another error in our project. So let's look at this. And the other error that we have here is because it's saying that we now need to pass in the is loading here. So just to get rid of this error and um, what I'm going to do just for now is just, I'm just going to pass in false. So let's just pass in false just to remove that error for now. We're still going to come back to that anyway. Okay, cool. Okay, so next we want to do is we want to add in a computer property to our view model to check to see if the content is actually loading. So let's do that now. So in our article view model, if you just hit enter here, we will say var and then we'll just go a property here called is loading. And then it's going to be of type bool. And then we're only going to make this a get. So we're not going to make this a setup. We're just going to say get because we don't want to change this value. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically implement this call. Cool. I'm just going to move this here so we can just see it nicely. 
cool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to implement this computer property. So in this computer property, I'm essentially just going to say the following. So I'm just going to say is cell state is equal to loading. That's it. So essentially, if the state here is equal to loading, then it is loading. It's true. All right, cool. So now what we need to do is we now essentially need to use this stuff that we've wrote here and um, apply it to our uh, view. But before we do that, what we actually need to do is we need to basically provide some dummy data um, for our app. So whilst it is loading, it will load some placeholder data and then um, what we'll do is we'll then switch to the real data from the service. So what I want you to do is if you just go to article and then you can see here we have this property called dummy data. What I actually want you to do is I want you to convert this article into an array. So we're just going to add the brackets around it and then we're going to add the brackets around our dummy data. So just do it like so. And then I just want you to basically just paste this just um, as many times as you want. Cool. So don't forget to remember, don't forget to add the comma, um, you know, before the next one. So now we have an array. So I want you to basically build the project. So command B and we should get an error, which is cool. So now we just want to fix this error. So we're going to say dummy data dot first. And I'm just going to force unwrap it because I know the reason why I'm force unwrapping it is because I know this is never going to be nil. So it's fine to force unwrap it. All right, cool. So we're in a good state now. So if you just go into your article view in the previews and just pass in the first uh, item in the dummy um, data, that'd be great. So now what we want to do is we now want to actually use the stuff that we've refactored in our feed view. So let's do that now. So if we just go into our feed view here, okay, cool. We want to basically essentially change the way that we handle the view model states. And we want to essentially not check for loading and success. So we just want to check for failed. And by default, we'll basically check to see if the state is loading or success. So let's do that now. So let's just do this now. So what we'll do is we'll delete the loading case. And then we will also um, just comment out the all of this. So including the success. And then we'll just add a default case, so default. So essentially, if you've never sorted before, what this means is that if everything else fails, um, it will go inside of this um, case. So actually, let's uncomment, let's delete this and let's uncomment uh, what we've just done. Cool. So within our list um, here in where it says content, what we're actually going to do is we're going to change this. So what this is going to say instead is it's going to say view model dot is loading. So if it is loading, what we want to do is essentially we want to use the dummy data. So we're going to say article dot dummy data or else view model dot articles. All right, cool. So essentially what we're saying here is if the view model, the state is loading, then we want to use the dummy data to present to the user or else we want to use the articles that we store back from the service. Now, if you've not saw this before, what this is called is a tertiary operator. So it's basically like a shorthand way of doing a conditional statement. So if we evaluate the condition here and if it's true, we put that here. And if it's false, then we put that here. So we now need to make one more change. So in here is loading. We want to basically pass in our view model dot is loading into our article view. And this is what I was referring to at the start when I was talking about um, source of truth. So we don't want the article view to have any responsibility other than basically receiving the data and presenting it to the user. So now the article view does not have the responsibility of that. That's the responsibility of our view model and our article view will react to the changes from our view model. So let's go into our article view. And in our and in our article view, what we want to do essentially is on our H stack, we want to actually change the way that this looks. So on our H stack, depending on whether it is loading or not, we want it to either show the placeholder or just don't um or just show the content from the um 
you know, servers, so not dot show the placeholder stuff. So let's do that now. So on your HDAC, you want to do dot redacted. And then we, what we want to check here is, is loading, and then we want to use the ternary operator again. So if it is loading, then we want to use the placeholder or else we'll just pass in an empty array. So the empty array basically signifies that um, we just don't want to pass in anything. So it's almost like a uh, reset. And one more thing as well is whilst the content is loading, we don't actually want someone to be able to actually tap the view because um, it's just dummy content. So we want to actually disable the interactions with the cell. So in order to do that, we can use something called allow hit testing. So just do allow hit testing. And then if it is loading, then we don't want it to be um, interactable. So we'll just put a bang here. So we're basically saying that um, unless the is loading is false, then allow hit testing. And if it isn't false, so this is true, then disable hit testing. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to run our app and see what we get. So we just hit the run button. Cool. And as you can see there, it loads the um, it loads the placeholder view and then it loads the content once it's finished. And if I just go off the tab and then go back into it, you can see again. We get it where we have the placeholder and it loads it. All right, sweet. Okay, cool. So hopefully that was useful in terms of seeing how we can refactor our apps to use Redacted to basically change the content uh, from our loading screen um, to this to make the US a lot better. So if you enjoyed this video, um, give it a thumbs up. Um, I'd appreciate that. Also as well, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for all the updates that I'm gonna be making. Leave any comments in the comment section below with any other content that um, you guys want to see or you'd like me to do and any feedback as well. It's all appreciated. I'll catch you in the next video and I'll see you in a bit. Deuces.